I'm pushing boundaries and I'm stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit today because I'm going to try painting something that I've never painted before in watercolour. I've been painting in watercolour now for nine years. Before I painted in watercolour I used acrylic paint for about 10 years and before that I worked mainly in graphite. When I worked in graphite I drew the human figure a lot. This is a drawing I did of my youngest while he was asleep on the lounge one day. Here he is again. This one I never bothered to finish. And this one I did when I was in high school back in the early 80s. This drawing is ruined now because of the acid in the paper. I think the deterioration that you see here is called foxing. So although I am familiar with drawing the human form, I've never actually painted a human figure in watercolour before. So this is very new to me. I ask my patrons on Patreon what they'd like to paint and I keep a list of their suggestions on my computer and the list is this long and it's growing. On the list I've got irises, daffodils, a kingfisher, a horse, succulents, an elephant, lots of things but all things that I know that I can paint easily. But also on the list are landscapes and people. Two of the things that I've never attempted in watercolour and they're the two things that fill me with fear. I knew that if I was going to be a good teacher then I've got to remember what it's like to learn again. So I've been teaching myself how to paint some trees. And I recently dabbled in some skies. And I've been sharing my learning process with my patrons. So I thought it was time to confront my biggest fear and paint a figure in watercolour. So I went searching on my computer to look at all the old family photographs that I had and I came across this one that I took of my husband years ago. That was when he had hair. I thought this one I can paint. I didn't want to paint something too difficult and then risk setting myself up to fail. Confidence is a fragile thing, I know mine certainly is. So I chose this simple photo because I didn't have to deal with a face and there wasn't much skin for me to worry about either. What I was attracted to mainly was the folds and creases on his t-shirt. I thought to myself that I can do this. I'll take slow and methodical steps with my learning and I won't be in any rush. I'll paint this one and a few more like this and then when I'm ready I'll choose more difficult subjects. The same way I did when I first started painting in watercolour. I built up slowly with simple subjects and gradually as my confidence grew, I started to paint more difficult subjects. Okay, so baby steps first. Let's have a look at this painting. I've drawn my drawing on a piece of Arsh cold press watercolour paper. I'm going to start with the background so I want to paint some masking fluid on the white parts so that I don't get any paint on them. This is schminky masking fluid so I'm going to paint that around the edge of the top section where the white parts of the t-shirt are mainly. I'm going to use an old brush because masking fluid can be hard on your brushes. So I've got an old synthetic that I used to use a long time ago. So I'm going to paint this masking fluid on the edge of the t-shirt all the way around and on his head I think. And once I've got that on that has to dry and then I'll start to paint the background. On my palette here I've got some Daniel Smith's cobalt blue and some cobalt teal blue. And I'm going to use these two colours to paint the background in. I've got my Da Vinci Casaneo oval pointed wash brush. This is a number 16. I've already had a play with these two colours on a scrap piece of paper to see if I like them together. I'm going to run it down the right hand side. I've got a bit of water on my paper here but I don't think I need it. I'll get a bit more paint. 
I decided not to fill in the whole background. I just wanted more of a splashy, messy wash behind him. Now I'm just getting a bit of water on my brush. And now some of the cobalt teal blue. And I drop that onto the cobalt blue. Some more of the cobalt blue. And I'll start to take it around the front. The paper's dry where I'm painting. I wet the area on the right shoulder when I first started, before I started to paint. But then I decided not to worry about wetting it, so all this area here is dry. There's just water on my brush now. I pick up some more of the teal blue and I keep going down here. Here I'm trying to be careful not to get it on the side of the t-shirt because I don't think I put any masking fluid just there. And now I'll flick some paint on to create a few drops. Now that it's dry I can take the masking fluid off with my finger. And then I have to draw on all the lines that I've lost. As I said, I've never mixed skin tone colours before, so I'm completely in the dark, other than having watched a few YouTube videos. I've got some Pyrrhal Orange and some Burnt Umber. I hope that's how you say Pyrrhal, I'm not sure. So I'm going to mix these two together, and hopefully I'll get something that resembles a skin tone. He's got olive skin, and quite a lot of his skin is in the shadow. There's a little bit that's in the sun. So I'll wash this colour all over the legs and the back of the neck. And I'm hoping it will be okay. I'll mix a lot of water with it so that it's nice and pale to start with. Okay, I'll see how that looks. So I'll paint it on the back of the head. Painted on the arm that's sticking out here and on the legs and the foot and also this leg. So I'm painting all of that on dry paper. I've mixed up some grey and I've started painting in all the shadows and creases on the t-shirt. Here I'm dropping in some Windsor Violet onto the wet paint. The grey I mixed up from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I'm painting on dry paper. This is some French Ultramarine that I've got and I'm dropping that onto the grey. I might put a bit over here too. Here I'm softening paint edges with my damp brush. The paint is still damp here so I'm using my brush to take a few highlights off. It's just lifting a bit of paint off. Just wetting the paper there and I'll put some grey paint there just a little tiny bit. It bleeds back over the water. Painting in the bottom of the t-shirt now. And I'll drop some violet in there as well. So now I want to paint the shadows that are on the skin. So I've got some Windsor Violet here and I'm mixing that in with the skin mix. So I'm hoping that will cool it down and it will look okay over the top of the skin colour that I've already got there. 
So this arm here is completely in shadow so I'll paint it straight over the top. I know it won't be quite this dark when it dries. I'll paint it up here on the shadow side of the face as well. It's really hard to see what's going on here on the reference photo that I'm using. He was a fair way away when I took the photo so there's not a lot of detail for me to work with. I know there's an E sitting there but I can't see it very well. Here I'm pushing that colour over the top of the hair. I'm thinking that that will be a good base that I could put some darker colour on over the top. Then I start to put that colour onto the legs. So this leg is in shadow but there's a little section of sunlight up the top of the leg. So I'll wash this paint out of my brush and I'll use my damp brush to soften that paint edge there. I don't want a hard edge there so this brush just softens that paint edge away. And then I paint in this one. This leg has also got a sunlit spot on the side. So I'll soften that paint edge away as well. Here I've got a bit of Windsor Violet on my brush and I'm dabbing that onto the damp paint. The legs look to me on the reference photo like they've got a sort of a purple hue on them. So I thought I'd put a bit more colour there. I need to soften that edge more so I'll take a damp brush and rub away. I've just given the shorts a wash of Payne's Grey so it's not too dark at this stage. This is the colour I'll build on top of. The legs are dry of course. Here I'm taking a bit of paint off with a damp brush and while I leave them to dry I'll wash in the hat as well with the Payne's Grey. And also the belt here that's around his waist. And I'll attach his knife to the belt. Up here I'm giving the side of the head another layer of that paint. This time I paint it over the ear that was there in the shadow. Just dried a bit light, I felt it needed another layer. And I've got some Payne's Grey here on my brush and I'm painting in that area between the sleeve and the side of the t-shirt. Now I'm starting to paint some more Payne's Grey over the top of this dry wash. I want to darken the left hand side and leave some light showing on the right hand side where the sun is. I'm just dry brushing on this section here just by pushing the side of my brush down onto the paper. There's a crease in here that I want to paint in. And also some detail on the side here where his pocket is. Now I can see that that's going to dry and it's going to be too pale. So I've got some Windsor Violet there and I'm dropping that onto the damp paint. Just want to make it a bit bolder. Now I want to start painting in the hair so I've got some sepia on my brush. As 
I said, it's really hard to see what's going on on the reference photo up here. I know there's a little light patch of hair there on the back of his head. Now I've got a bit more pigment, still sepia, and I'm putting that on the left hand side where it's darker. And I'll paint a little shadow there behind his ear. He's wearing sunglasses as well, so I'll paint those on. I thought at first I'd use sepia, which I've got on my brush. But then when I put it on, I thought, no, it needs to be a different colour. It needs to be a bit darker, so I've got some Payne's grey now. And I think the peak of his cap there needs a bit of colour on the side. So that's Payne's grey as well. The left hand side of the cap is quite dark so I've got some Payne's grey here. I dampened the paper to put this on because I thought that I wanted soft edges here. I thought that would help me to keep those edges soft. So that's left the little sunlit area on the right hand side. Now I'm darkening the hair again because I don't have enough paint here. So I've picked up some more sepia. I've just turned my board and I've switched down to my little double zero brush and this is Payne's Grey. Painting the fishing line. I've just painted in the knife handle with Payne's Grey. And I'll paint these sandals that he's got on his feet with some sepia. Then I darken up the left side of the knife handle with some more Payne's Grey. It's darker this time. And I'll use Pyrrhal Orange on the tip of the knife. Now I want to start washing in the rocks that he's standing on. So I'm going to do these on the wet paper so that the paint will run and I'll have soft edges. This is my grey that I mixed up from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I establish the top edge of the rock with that and then I'll just push it down. This is some Burnt Sienna. I've put my board on a slight angle here just so the paint will run down the paper more. The rest of the painting I've painted when it was flat against the table. I've just dropped a bit more water in there now to try and move that pigment and then I paint in the next rock with more of that grey paint. I don't worry about waiting till the other rock is dry. And this is burnt sienna again. And a bit more water. The back side of his sandal here needs some more colour on it because it's in the shadow. So I've got some sepia now but I've got more pigment. And I paint in these other rocks here. This is Payne's Grey again. I'm on the dry paper here. And then I paint the other rocks in with my grey that I mixed up. Now I've got some Payne's grey and I'll use it to darken this side of the rock. And I'm going to take a bit of paint off that top side because it's in the sun more. So I just use a damp brush to take a bit of paint off. And then I 
wash in the final rock over here with some of my grey that I mixed up. And I think I'll drop a bit more of the burnt sienna over here as well. And that bleeds down over the wet paint. I'm wetting this area here between the two rocks because I want to put some darker Payne's grey in there to separate one rock from the other and I want the paint edges to be soft so that's Payne's grey with a fair amount of pigment on my brush I've wet this area and I've just dropped a bit more of the Payne's grey in there as well now I'll wet this one over here I want to put Tiny bit of detail there on the rock, not much. But I want to do it on the wet paper so that the paint edges will be soft and fuzzy. This light patch here in the middle of your shorts is bothering me so I'm going to dry brush a bit of colour over the top of it just so that it's not so noticeable. I think that's better. That was Payne's Grey. And I'm also thinking that the back of the legs aren't dark enough so I'm going to put another layer of that colour over the top, the shadow colour. I'm a bit apprehensive about doing it because I don't want to make it too dark but it is quite dark on the reference photo so I'll give it a go this is a learning exercise for me and I'll see what it looks like and I've done the same thing on this other leg and now I'm softening the paint edge there again so there he is. I've also put a tiny bit of yellow on the top of his hat. So I'm going to stop now before I wreck it. And there's my finished painting. So that was not a bad little exercise for me to do. So I was pleased that I did this painting. I'll do quite a few more little studies like this one that won't take me too long and won't challenge me too much. It'll give me more experience mixing skin colours and painting skin and then I'll slowly start to paint more difficult subjects until eventually I feel confident enough to try painting a portrait or a front view of the subject. Baby steps. Thanks for watching. I hope this was some help to you. As always, a like and a subscribe is very much appreciated. And I'll be back soon with some new tips to share with you. I ask my patrons on Patreon what they'd like to paint and I keep their list of suggestions on my computer. Doing that too quickly. That's too fast. And I keep their list of suggestions on my computer. The list is this long. It's long. It's long. It's a long one. It's getting bigger by the day. Alright. And then when I'm ready, I'll choose more difficult subjects. The same way. Now we wait for the tractor. So although I'm familiar with drawing the human form, I've never painted a human figure in watercolour before. And I've never painted it clothes so I thought it was time to confront my biggest fear and I'm blinking like that too much and then I'll slowly then I'll slowly I thought to myself that I can do this I'll take my slur slurming I'll take my slurning, slow and methodical. Try it. Yep, slow, slurning. As 
always a like and a subscribe is very much appreciated and I'll be back soon with some new tips.